Well, welcome everybody. Today, we are talking about mitochondrial energy production, such an important component of overall health. We're going to talk about oxidative stress and how that parlays into inflammation. And we're going to talk about our antioxidant defense systems, ones that we naturally produce within our body. And then we're also going to talk about a really fascinating compound called C60. And this is a carbon, it's basically made out of uh, 60 carbons, and uh, it makes a shape almost like a, like a soccer ball. And it's considered the most powerful antioxidant out there. And I've got a great expert. This is Ken, Ken Swartz, and he's the founder and chief science officer of C60 Purple Power, a health and wellness company committed to delivering the highest quality carbon 60 products available. Ken has run several research science laboratories over the course of his career, and he discovered C60 while developing the Moxie Fusion Reactor. During his research, he became aware of the powerful free radical neutralizing properties of C60. And in 2016, Ken founded C60 Purple Power, which offers 99.99% pure sublimated carbon 60 that's never been exposed to solvents. And it's delivered in 100% certified organic oils. I really like the oils. I've got it in olive oil, avocado oil, MCT oil, and uh, they've got some, some different flavors there as well, different varieties, really easy delivery system. And uh, Ken, really happy to have you on today. Oh, glad to be on. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about, to start, how you discovered C60. Well, as it mentioned in the, the bio, I was actually working on this a metal oxygen fusion reactor. And uh, during the research uh, of other scientists who kind of researched this unusual fusion method, uh, it was like the late doctor this and the late doctor that. And so, you know, we didn't really know what we were dealing with and even possibilities of mysterious forms of radiation. So I went looking out to find uh, other ways to protect my team and myself from radiation. And I read about this stuff called carbon 60. It's scientific name is Buckminster Fullerene. And uh, they had one where they gave one set of rats uh, carbon 60. The other set of rats got, uh, you know, didn't get anything in their controls. And then they hit them with a fatal dose of radiation. Pretty much all the carbon 60 rats lived where the control rats immediately died. And they had a couple experiments like that. So uh, when I learned about that, I said, I'm going to get some of that stuff to protect myself and my crew. And uh, so we did it from a couple of sources. And we used it during the... Uh, experiment, which ended successfully, but I kept taking it because I noticed things like, you know, the after lunch blahs where you want to go and take a nap, that kind of went away, the carb crash. And uh, also uh, I noticed things, you know, I used to drive a lot of um, uh, dirt biking, you know, a little racing on that. <laughs> so I have a few uh, injuries from, uh, well, crashing. And I noticed those things sort of faded and, uh, but re really kind of caught my attention was, about eight months after using it, I went into my eye doctor and I could go a long story, but basically my druze or wet macular degeneration had disappeared and my optometrist had never seen that happen in his many decades of practice. Wow. So you kind of had an early stage macular degeneration and you were getting yes. that checked up on and you started taking the C60 and how long were you taking it? before? About I eight was... months. I wasn't totally yeah. faithful of it. And, and you know, one thing is just a fluke, right? Yeah. So but in the meantime, my chief, my electrical engineer on the project had this, had developed a wet macular degeneration, pretty severe. Yeah. And, uh, and he had, uh, so I made a formulation of C60 and MCT coconut oil because Gary Rodriguez, right? He had type two diabetes, which kind of mm -hmm. caused the wet macular degeneration. And so after about a year and a half on that, his wet macular degeneration completely disappeared along with his uh, type two diabetes. Oh, amazing. Yeah. Let, let's talk about the science of why, how that would work. Why oh, okay. C60 would be so powerful there. Well, this is uh, just, you can kind of see behind me on the screen. Uh, I got one of those screen share things. So this is the carbon 60 molecule. It's yeah. a little, it's a little soccer ball shaped molecule. And uh, it was discovered in 1985. And then they got a Nobel prize in 1996 for chemistry, but it was really hard to make. And so finally, when they did get enough, they wanted to test for toxicity, right? And they started getting, besides the radiation stuff that uh, I talked about earlier, they had did like one of the first tests was the Botry study. And, it, and, and they were, you know, thinking it'd be toxic and it actually doubled the lifespan of test animals. 
Hmm. And at that point, it just, it went all over the place. And uh, just to go on further about C60, eventually, you know, some people really decided, well, you know, they have all these beneficial studies, so let's go for broke. And so they decided they were going to give extreme doses of C60 to rats, test animals, and uh, they gave them one gram per kilogram, which is 10,000 times what a other studies had found to be a health beneficial dose. And even at that extreme level, there was no toxicity. Now, if you tried to do that with like NAC or vitamin D or maybe even vitamin C, you would you know, either have serious health consequences for the rats or you could kill them. So that's kind of really amazing about C60. So they took a very high dose, but no toxic effects were, not were noticed. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Yep. And, and you know, with the eye, when we think about neural tissue, and the eye, we have to think mitochondrial density, right? Because oh, yeah. your nervous system, your brain, your eyes, things like that, just so dense in mitochondria. And mitochondria will produce all the energy in your body. And so let's talk a little bit about mitochondrial health and how oxidative stress, let's bring that term in and how that impacts mitochondrial function. Okay, obviously we know the mitochondria, the powerhouse, the cell, they're like independent organelles. They got their own DNA and they self-regulate. So let's say if the larger cell isn't producing like two of the critical uh, uh, antioxidants mitochondria need are SOD, superoxide dismutase, mm -hmm. and catalase, they work together to go after superoxide, the most damaging oxidative radical in your body. And your mitochondria make a whole lot of it because they're kind of like the furnaces of your body. And uh, also uh, they found that C60 also neutralizes the hydro hydroxyl ion. Yeah, but yeah. that's the only yeah. two oxidative species it deals with. It doesn't yeah. react with anything else in the body. So, like, it doesn't interfere because there's a lot of oxidative radicals in the body that they are used as signaling molecules. Right. Like right. The nitrogen oxides. That's a vasodilator. Contracts expands your capillaries. Hydrogen peroxide, uh, and then some a bunch of others built around sulfur, iron, and zinc. C60 doesn't interact with any of those. That's why it had no toxicity at any level. Mm. But the two, well, probably the most important one we're talking about is, is C60 is an SOD mimic. Yeah. It can go after that superoxide that your mitochondria produce in abundance. And uh, and that's one of its key, that's kind of how it's key element of how it uh, increases mitochondria function and its, its main health benefit. And it also uh, takes care of the hydroxyl radical, which is produced by radiation and a lot of other breakdown products. And it's the second most damaging oxidative radical body. These oxidative radicals are so damaging, the body doesn't use them for any signaling molecules. Right. And those are the intracellular uh, antioxidants that are, or I'm sorry, oxid oxidants, pro-oxidants that are produced uh, through energy production. And so you have um, you have SOD, superoxide dismutase, which is kind of an antioxidant pathway. And some people genetically um, have polymorphisms there where they, where they have uh, slower production of SOD. And so they're not able to protect their mitochondria. They're not able to protect their cells as effectively because of that. And that's somewhere where obviously C60 can jump in and really help. Um, and so during the process of metabolism, we're producing superoxide, we're producing hydroxyl, uh, free radicals. We're also producing perioxy or what is it? Perinitrate. Yeah. Peroxy nitrate. Uh, yeah. Perioxy nitrates. Right. right. So it's not impacting that. Right. But it is impacting the hydroxyl and the, and the superoxide. Yeah. Well, it's the part of the thing is the peroxy nitrite is made by the superoxide getting together mm. with the nitrogen oxide. Right. So if you cut right. it off at the pass before it, it gets to the nitrous oxide, then you've got, to, and usually the nitrous oxide is outside of the mitochondria in, in the larger cell or even in the vascular system. So, cause it's a, uh, it's a signaling molecule, the cells release to, you know, to increase. So, so that's the key. And, and one of the things, the key part about, I guess I should go a little bit into chemistry here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like most molecules, C60 likes to have a positive charge achieve right. a positive charge and the oxidative radicals of superoxide that's an oxygen with an extra election elect electron and the hydroxyl radical hydroxyl ion is basically a, a water molecule missing its proton so it's got like a free electron and then they go out and damage things well c60 likes to get a positive charge now most molecules in nature virtually all of them get a positive charge by releasing electron in the environment where C60 gets a positive charge by taking hydrogen ions and storing them inside of its cage-like structure, where it mm. can store up to six of them and gets kind of like a, a light positive two uh, balance. And then it uses those hydrogen ions to actually neutralize oxidative radicals. 
And uh, it can do this all on its own. Like if you've got glutathione or SOD or catalase, when they do a reaction, then the body has to reset them and so that they can work again. And that takes ATP and a, a pro chemical process, which takes time, where C60 can do the job all by itself. Yeah, powerful stuff. Now, what are the complications of oxidative stress that is not kept under control? Well, the first thing, it's, uh, first thing is cross-linking of proteins. You know, yeah. Proteins, are a lot of them are really complicated. They've got to move around and wiggle to do whatever job they're, they're doing. Well, if you get an oxidative radical, it cross-links you know, two of the molecules that shouldn't be there. The protein can't uh, form the shape or uh, wiggle around like it's supposed to. So now you've got a damaged protein that doesn't work. And the second thing oxidative radicals do is they punch holes in the mitochondria and the cellular membranes. And that means things leak out or things leak in that shouldn't be happening. Hmm. And uh, especially like a calcium ions, those are the worst. And they cause a lot of oxidative damage. And then, of course, oxidative radicals could go and damage uh, cellular DNA and RNA. And, of course, that's the blueprint of your cells. That's making everything happen. And if they get damaged, well, that's a real problem. Yeah, absolutely. And so you talked about a little bit earlier when you were taking the C60, you noticed that you had better carb tolerance, better carbohydrate tolerance. Why would something like C60 or an antioxidant help impact uh, your insulin and your blood sugar stability? Well, one of the things I think it's obviously if the mitochondria are functioning uh, better, then uh, then you can, uh, then, you know, ATP is being produced and you can do that. But the other thing is that mitochondria make is they make pregnenolone, mm. which is the precursor molecule for all the hormones. And this is like people will tell us, you know, they take C60 to get better sleep because once pregnenolone production goes up and actually pregnenolone is made from LDL, the bad cholesterol. And, and the reason we have problems with it's the bad cholesterol is because instead of being used metabolically in, to be pregnenolone or some other substance by the mitochondria, it just sits around and oxidizes and sticks to our arteries or veins and you have heart, you have cardiovascular disease. So when the pregnenolone goes up, that means I'll be able, my, uh, you know, the, the, the organs that produce the hormones, now they can produce all the pregnenolone they want. So like my capacity to produce insulin or the, the substances which neutralize insulin, I think is a whole lot better. And, you know, people notice that better sleep, you get more human growth hormone, and also your androgens go up. So that's the, that, that's converted to testosterone and estrogen. So I think the, just the rise in, in hormone function uh, in all of its manifestation, because it happens everywhere in the body and all the cells that make hormones, not just like a hormone replacement therapy, which is one hormone, which, you know, is usually a synthetic form that doesn't work very well. Yeah, really, really fascinating stuff. And so how does, how does accelerated oxidative stress result in inflammation, right? Inflammation now is something that happens with our immune system, right? So it activates our immune system. So how does that lead into inflammation? Well, usually it's, uh, you've got some process which is causing damage. Yeah. And so you're producing oxidative radicals superoxides, hydroxyl radicals, there's a few others, peroxynitrite, and, and they go out and they start damaging the cells. Well, when that happens, the cells start releasing messengers, cytokines mostly, which then bring in macrophages, which then breeds more cytokines. You get the neurophils, you get all these other cells go rushing to the site. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, classic, and you, know, you get the inflammation, the redden, reddening and all that. So if you can stop the oxidative radicals before they trigger that cellular response, then you don't get the inflammatory response. And they've actually found this. In fact, one study where they used human mast cells in, uh, in vitro, the test tube, uh, they found that C60 moderated the, uh, the release of histamines. Perhaps right. we don't right. exactly know why, perhaps it was better mitochondria function than that. Mm -hmm. And then they took that into animal studies and they had, uh, I think it was rats that had been conditioned to go into aphylactic shock when exposed to a particular allergen. And so the ones that got C60, they didn't go into aphylactic shock and die, whereas the control rats did. Uh, and they, they went into aphylactic shock. So C60 kind of moderates the immune response in a healthy way. It, right. takes, it tends to drive things toward homeostasis, which is balance. Yeah, yeah, modulates and balances it. Yeah, and, and you mentioned how oxidative elements or free radicals can have a signaling effect. Uh, you mentioned, obviously, superoxide as well as hydroxyl, the hydroxyl free radicals and peroxynitrate. 
Those don't, they are just uh, destructive in the body. But the other free radicals that are formed through everyday metabolism, um, they're actually signaling the cell, almost like a hormetic effect where, uh, where they're a stressor that helps activate different genetic responses uh, from the body. Can you go into more detail on that? Yeah, you need these. Yeah, you need these oxidative radicals to uh, that the body produces. I mean, primarily like nitrogen oxide. That's one of the key ones. There's a whole yeah. variety NOx, and they they can dilate or uh, contract your capillaries, which is super important. And then hydrogen peroxide is another one that is released. And uh, and these the, the you know there's because you need a little stress. It's it's a balance of redox. You need a little bit of mm-hmm. oxidative radicals, the right ones. The body uses for signaling. And then you need molecules that that reduce that. And by doing those two, it's sort of a way that the body signals the cells and other things around there. <clears throat> and there's a whole bunch of specialized ones which are based around sulfur iron and zinc that are much that are activated at much lower levels and neutralized at much lower levels. And so you know it's 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 the signaling system in the body. And if it doesn't if that's not functioning, then you have problems. And that's why a lot of people, if you take too much of uh, certain oxidative uh, antioxidants you can have a negative effect because you you mess up the signaling molecules. Now the cells can't communicate. And if they can't communicate, they can't function properly. Right. And another good example is exercise. So when you're exercising, you're actually creating a massive amount of oxidative stress in the body, but it triggers the body now to you know turn on its antioxidant defense genes and uh, to make adaptations that make you stronger and healthier. And so in general, that is a really healthy response and you were talking about, obviously, you know, there's, you can certainly get oxidative stress that gets out of control and you can get a prolonged level of inflammation. A certain level of inflammation when you exercise is key. It's necessary for the healing process, the adaptation process, so you can adapt and get stronger and more resilient. But a lot of people end up overtraining or having too much soreness afterwards. And you mentioned how C60, you were noticing that a lot of joint pain, a lot of different things like that you were seeing improvement there. Is that correct? Yes, and that's that's DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness. But a lot of this, you know, as we get older, uh, a, a capacity for, you know, a little gray hair, a capacity for our cells, larger cells to produce antioxidants go down, which, you know, like super SOD and catalase and glutathione and CoQ10. Uh, they, they And so what happens when you exercise, it just kind of overwhelms the cell's capacity to do that. Yeah. And then and then you get that real muscle soreness, you know, the next two days later, two days later, you're feeling sore. And so kind of C60 moderates that because it's everywhere in the cell and uh, it can just it can just lower those levels so that you you're it, it, like we people athletes notice they can uh, it, it delays the uh, the onset of lactic acid buildup, which is basically just a, the cycling is so fast that the antioxidants can't work to. And so that just kind of jams up and lactic acid is sort of like a it jams the system up because it has to be the and so C60 delays the onset of uh, of lactic acid buildup and also people notice DOMS the delayed onset muscle soreness goes down the next day or if they so other oxidative things like drinking too much if you take C60 if you go drinking or something then the next day you don't have the hangover it just kind of uh, gets rid of those that damage before and, and then a lot of this is 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 something when you get older it's, yeah. You know, when you're young in your 20s, you may not notice this, but once you get a few gray hairs, then you do notice all these things. Yeah, for sure. And and a certain level of oxidative stress from exercise is critical, right? It's critical for the adaptation process. So if you're just jamming a bunch of different antioxidants after you work out, you're actually minimizing some of the benefits. You may not have quite as much soreness, but you're minimizing some of the adaptive benefits that your body gets. Your body actually gets stronger under stress. And that's kind of the idea there. Now, would you say that C60 helps to modulate that because it allows a certain amount of oxidative stress, uh, but it gets kind of the, um, you know, the more destructive players and it takes those out. Yeah. It's, well, it's the SOD mimic. Yeah. And and that's the one when you start exercising your levels of, you know, superoxide could go up a hundred times, right? If you're really hard exercising. And so C60 moderates that uh, the superoxide. And, and so the downstream effects, you know, you don't get the peroxynitrates and, and all mm-hmm. that stuff that, which is actually, you know, it's a nitrogen oxide and a superoxide get together. And that thing can travel a long way and do a lot of damage because it's, it's, it's not very reactive, but 
you know, which actually allows it to move and cause damage everywhere. So if you just cut it off there, it's a little less. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, athletes, we have a lot of athletes that uh, just swear by C60 because it's, you know, taking them from mid pack to top of their class. And which yeah. is also, there's been no rulings on C60. I mean, it's not a drug, it's not a nutrient, it's not a supplement, it's, you know, an allotrope of carbon, it's like, you know, diamond dust or something, and it's, uh, and it doesn't, uh, doesn't fit in any of those boxes, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not in any of those categories, so they don't seem to care yet. <laughs> we have yeah. somebody, you know, we don't sell it, but we have somebody else who sells it to racing horses in Europe somewhere, and they've found yeah. that uh, C60, uh, you know, makes their horses much more competitive. Wow, really interesting. And how does it compare to glutathione? Glutathione is a really popular supplement out there. A lot of people are using NAC and acetylcysteine as a precursor to glutathione. They're also using things like acetylated glutathione, reduced glutathione, and liposomal glutathione for enhanced absorption. How does C60 compare to glutathione? Because both of those are, you know, glutathione has been considered the master antioxidant within the body. Um, and so how does C60 compare to that? Well, glutathione does a whole bunch of jobs. And the only thing that C60 does that glutathione does is neutralizing the hydroxyl ion. Hmm. That's it. And so what it does is uh, hydroxyl ions, the second most damaging oxidative radical in your body. It's produced in injuries, radiation, uh, generally bad things cause it to happen. And so yeah. C60 can carry that burden for glutathione, which means the remaining glutathione in your cells can go and do something else. We've also yeah. found that C60 was uh, gets rid of graphene hydroxide in test tube. Mm. So okay. we can't say that translates into the body, but, but that is something. So C60 can take care of that burden that glutathione usually takes care of. Yeah. And so what glutathione you have uh, can go to do other things. And uh, it's still being a big challenge to, uh, to get glutathione into cells. I mean, the right. liposomal is a uh, delivery and some of the others they're, they're really like new and radical, which is great that they've actually found a way to around that. So, but still it's still kicking a while to get to those cells and where they need to go. But uh, if C60 can take the burden off that, in yeah. that one specific category, that's all it does. It doesn't do any of the other jobs of glutathione because it's so critical in like dozens of uh, of operations in your cells. It just it just allows what glutathione you have to work more efficiently. So to replay that, glutathione works to re to basically reduce the uh, hydroxyl free radical and neutralize that. And that's the same. That's one of the same oxidative elements that C60 works on. So C60 works on the superoxide radical as well as the hydroxyl radical. So by taking out the hydroxyl radical, that helps preserve your body's natural glutathione levels, which are needed for, you know, like you said, a ton of different things, including a lot of phase two liver uh, enzyme uh, enzymes to help neutralize uh, different toxins that are coming through uh, the system. So, um, so you help preserve your glutathione stores, correct? Yes, that would be that would be a much better yeah. uh, shorter description than mine. Yeah, no, that was good. Sometimes we got to talk through this, right? And 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 you know the listeners really like, especially when we're talking these scientific terms. We need to, you know, continually replay them so that way people get it. I know for me that's that's one way that I learn better. So let's talk about absorbency of C60. Um, you know, you guys have put it into these organic oils, right? Things like avocado oil, olive oil, MCT oil. So C60, have you found that it absorbs better? There's better absorption when you combine it with these oils? Oh, yes. That's, and that's the key, the only way it is. Because that's just something, by the way, C60 has to be dissolved as single molecules in an oil. To, to be a health effective. There's people that have particles of C60. It got a little bit, you know, C60 was really small and all the producers were pretty good people. And then it became popular. And just like the CBD market, we have all these fly-by-nighters come in to make a buck. And so, so the things we wanna, the things you wanna look for is we picked out, like for instance, oils, you wanna have the healthy oils, you know, cause there, there are oils that have a really great shelf life, but are very inflammatory. Yeah. You're talking canola oil, sunflower oil, safflower oil, soybean oil. You know, you don't want those oils in your body because right. they're so inflammatory. And then on the other side, we've got great oils like fish oils, hemp seed oil, and flaxseed oil, which are great because they have a high omega-3, but they go rancid really quickly. Mm, very in fact, fragile. you should always buy those oils off the refrigerated section of your health food store. Yeah. Because if you buy them off the shelf, you don't know how long that bottle's been there. You know, it could be rancid. And so we picked like the Goldilocks, which have like a nice long shelf life are easily absorbed 
and 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 our healthy oils. And so that's obviously a extra virgin olive oil. In fact, that's what C60 was only available in originally when we first were doing the surgeons. But if I took like, you know, an ounce or half an ounce of olive oil, I might have to go visit the bathroom. <laughs> so I started putting it in uh, avocado oil so that, because uh, it's much easier to digest and doesn't have so many digest, yeah, it doesn't have those issues down the road. And also I did the MCT coconut oil for my friend, Gary, because it's it's great for athletes, people with glucose processing issues do yeah. it. So you kind of have a selection there. There's a little less C60 in the MCT coconut oil because those are made, medium chain triglycerides. They're a little shorter, they don't hold as much. But hmm. the thing about MCTs is they can be turned to ketones in your liver, which then allows, you know, which then, uh, what your cells can use as a, an energy source. So it's like flex fuel. So you can either do glucose or ketones. So people, you know, athletes love it and, and people with processing. But but yeah, C60 goes right in because it's lipophilic. It has no sol solubility in water. So it goes right through the gut barrier, blood brain barrier. The cells act and mitochondria actively uptake it through endocytosis. So it, it, and you can have up to 10 to the 17th molecules of C60 in your body. So when the C60 is coming in through the oil, it cleaves off of the oil and then kind of goes right in the bloodstream or is it like taken uh, it, up it, yeah, by a chylomicron or? Yeah, it sticks to the oil and goes through the gut. And then as the oil is taken up by the cells, the C60 goes with it. It's, okay. it's, it's a van der Waals force. It's kind of like sticky hydrogen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, process. And so it's actually, it's a, somebody could out there could get a, uh, uh, cause I've done the studying and it doesn't fit in any of the Vanderwall's forces. So it's got <laughs> its own little category and it hasn't been classified yet, characterized fully. So some scientist out there who's uh, interested, they could make a name for themselves just because it's a new Vanderwall's force. For sure. And, you know, I would be interested to know if there's better absorption actually with the MCT oil, just because the, the longer chain fats are going to have, they're going to be broken down into smaller components. Um, and then the MCT, particularly like a C8 or a C10 MCT can actually, you know, basically that we don't, we don't digest it more or less. It, it passes right in, turns into a ketone and it gets right into the bloodstream. So I'd be interested to know that, um, you know, if that, if that was actually getting better absorption or not. We're, we're not sure. We think maybe because yeah. we know that the, uh, <laughs> the athletes, you know, because boom, but is it is it just because the, you know, the ketones being produced or, or and the C60 is probably right. just coming along for the ride. And right, another thing exactly. is we found that C60, because I talked about hydrogen ions, mm -hmm. but also C60 is very sticky for hydrogen gas. So yeah. up to like 23 molecules of hydrogen gas can stick to a C60. So we found that people that are taking like MCT coconut oil and hydrogen water, mm. hydrogen gas water yeah. in their yeah. athletic endeavors. It uh, just helps them blow the, because it, it seems to supercharge the C60. Wow. So drinking hydro water that has got hydrogen gas in it. So hydrogen water along with C60 can just supercharge it. Oh yeah. Cause, cause C60 will grab on and hold onto it. You know, normally wow, if you can take hydrogen gas water, it's the hydrogen's gone in 11 minutes. It just dissipates. Yeah. But, uh, but C60 will hold on and allow the body to use that much longer. And another good source for people out there is uh, for to get hydrogen gas in your body is actually foot baths, those ionic foot baths, because they produce large amounts of hydrogen gas. And hydrogen is very permeable, so it go right through your skin into your blood system and then go through your whole body. So that's one of the benefits of ionic foot baths is actually the hydrogen gas that uh, soon circulates through your system. Yeah, that is interesting. And I have a, a, a hydrogen water machine. And so should I put the oil in the water or is the oil better to consume? I would imagine it would be better consumed with a meal. Yeah, yeah right? it's better consumed and uh, yeah. yeah. We, oh, by the way, yeah, if you've never taken an oil, usually we recommend taking C60 in the morning because it has a kind of a, gets all the mitochondria going. So it's a bit stimulatory, yeah. gets you right up and going, uh, gets, gets uh, stimulates dopamine production. So we would uh, recommend taking that in the, in the morning and it'll go everywhere in your body and then just take the hydrogen gas whenever. Okay, and so you can take it whenever because it's it's yeah. long acting. It's acting on those antioxidants and it's in the system. And yeah, so and now like, you can just hydrate normally. Yeah, it's just like storage. It's like a little C60 becomes a little storage for the gas. So it doesn't dissipate in 11 minutes. You've got, it'll hang around for hours perhaps. Yeah, that's really interesting. And so uh, again, so guys, to, to summarize that, C60 best taken with a good quality oil 
right? You, you want to avoid the vegetable oils, right? Obviously, we've talked a lot about that uh, on this podcast and summit. You know, we really want to avoid corn oil, soybean, safflower, cottonseed oil. These are all highly inflammatory oils in general, kind of your seed oils, highly inflammatory. Your omega-3 fats, when we think about fish oil, very fragile. So, you know, we want to refrigerate those. We want to keep those uh, well-preserved. But your olive oil, olive oil has got a ton of polyphenols that are amazing for the body. So we're a huge fan of that. Avocado oil is a very good oil. And then MCT oil, which turns right into ketones. And so the uh, C60 Purple Power Company that Ken started, that's the oils that they're using. The avocado oil, olive oil, and MCT oil. And they're all 100% certified organic oils. And why was that so important, you guys, to make sure they were 100% certified organic? Oh, because there's so much junk out there. I mean, even Absolutely. with organic certification, there's probably stuff floating around. C60 can help with that. But but it's just, it's. I mean, if you, we, we try to avoid any way you can, you know, your toxic burden. There's just so much stuff out there, you know, the glyphosates and all the, all yeah. the grain products. You've got all that. So that to minimize, you know, our goal, like anybody's goal should be to minimize any potential toxins. So organic oils. And also on the side of our products, there's a QR code. And you can actually, you know, scan it up and you can actually see the certificates of analysis for where our oils come from, the purity of our C60. And then after we're processing it, you can you can look at the, because uh, we, we, we send it out to third parties, which go after micro, look for microbiological contamination and uh, C60 concentration. So you can actually see those two that, you know, we have it before and after third party testing so that uh, you can be ensured that the quality and purity of your product. Because we, we feel that's important. I think that's so important. You know, obviously there's so many chemicals out there, glyphosate being one of the most notorious. And, you know, it's even things that aren't, you know, typically sprayed, like, you know, our grains and corn and things like that can still end up with glyphosate. So you definitely want to make sure you're getting organic oils and, you know, knowing that you guys are looking at the, you know, the, the testing to see what kind of toxins may be, may be in there and making sure things pass, um, you know, your quality standards is so important. So it's good that we're able to, to look at that with the QR code. Now, what is the, what is a typical clinical dosage, right? So when we're looking at like, is it milligrams? Is it grams? Uh, what is well, a typical <laughs> clinical dosage? This is America. So yeah. <laughs> we've had to, uh, we put it in teaspoons and tablespoons. Okay. So it's, yeah. it's well, obviously with the oil. Yeah. Yeah. So we basically, yeah. So we basically, if you're like in your mid weight, let's say 130 to 170 pounds in your, your thirties or forties, basically a, a teaspoon in the morning is probably all you're going to need. Now, and how much actual C60 is like how many milligrams of C60 is in? Cause obviously you've got the oil as well. So what did, do you know what the typical range is? Well, the C, avocado and olive oil have about the same amount of C60 in them. Yeah. And, uh, and MCT oil, shorter chain triglycerides has about half as much. I couldn't let me, it's, it's usually, okay, I'll put, I'll go back to science. It's usually about around, somewhere around uh, 0.8 to 0.75 milligrams per milliliter. Okay. In gotcha. avocado and olive oil. And then when you get to uh, MCT, it's about 0.3. Yep. So there's not a lot, it's, but that's because, but a little goes a long way and which is really good. And <laughs> C60 hangs around somewhere like four to 10 days in the body. It doesn't make any chemical, permanent chemical bonds. So it just tends to wash out either through the kidneys or the liver through the gall and uh, out the backside. So, so it, it needs to be replaced, but you know, if you miss a day, it's not a big deal because it's taking, mm. you know, four to it's good four to seven days. And also for like increased absorption, if you do like a couple, two or three small doses, let's say in the morning, rather than just one big dose, that tends to, uh, that tends to increase absorption. And now, now I just want to warn people, if you've never taken an oil before, you'll probably want to take it with food. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, if you're used to taking an oil on an empty stomach and you don't have digestive problems down it, then then that's okay too. But just just be aware yeah. of that. I would I would recommend just from a nutrition standpoint taking it with a meal because you really want to maximize your fasting window and oh, yes. uh, taking you know so taking an oil you know kind of early in your meal so it'll kind of get in there and get get highly absorbed. I think that's you know a really good strategy. Uh, so use it with your meal times. And you said roughly somewhere around a teaspoon a day is yeah, kind of like the day dosage. Or you got a little gray hairs and old yeah. 
or you're a little heavier, probably it's a tablespoon. Okay, yeah, you can or increase maybe your up dosage. to a tablespoon and a half if you've got a lot of those gray hairs. So, yeah, so, or you're really big. So that's that's kind of the way it is. And and another thing is, <laughs> it is good to take it with meals because when you, the fats in the oils also help like take up vitamin D. Yeah, true. Some of the right. B vitamins because they work together. So yeah, putting everything yeah, more together, nutrients out the of right, your meal. Yeah. Well, you have the keto stuff, and that's yes. that's something people should study, because uh, yeah, we eat way too many carbs in the the America with a sad diet, standard American diet, especially the fried foods, of course. But then there's that those uh, oxidated oils that uh, the bad ones for you. So, yeah, totally. It's- and and you know, really avoiding those inflammatory oils and avoiding high glycemic carbohydrates and starches. But then also using something like MCT oil, as well as, you know, like your product C60 helps improve your insulin sensitivity, which gives you a little bit more carb tolerance. So you don't have to necessarily dial your carbs down to, you know, zero or 20 grams. You're going to have a little bit more carb tolerance because your body's more insulin sensitive, better at getting sugar out of the bloodstream with less insulin. And that's key because the more insulin we produce, the less able we are to burn fat for fuel, the more inflammation and oxidative stress we produce. So we want to have really good insulin sensitivity and uh, doing good oils, right? MCT oil, we know that that turns into ketones and then helping to buffer oxidative stress with something like C60 can be very, very helpful uh, with keeping insulin under control and making a ketogenic approach easier, right? Uh, you have a little bit more grace and tolerance uh, when it comes to carbohydrate consumption. Oh, absolutely. And you know, one thing I want to say, C60 doesn't cure, prevent, or mm-hmm. mitigate any disease. What it does, it lifts the oxidative burden that your yeah. cells are under so that they can work more efficiently. But on your part, you've got to make sure those the right nutrients are present. So when the cells are operating at efficiency, they've got the inputs they need to produce all the things that they, they need to produce. And so, you know, on, on a health journey, it takes, you know, people have to, you have to work at it. This isn't, it's not gonna, there's no magic pill that's gonna get there. So, you know, good diet, proper supplementation, uh, enough rest, uh, you know, trying to avoid stress situations uh, <laughs> of a whole variety. Th- these are so important uh, in, if you're looking to get good health. Yeah, for sure. It's really a full lifestyle approach. And C60 is really a great tool that we can use as more or less like a free radical sponge that kind of goes in and just kind of washes out the system uh, and helps everything run better and more effectively, kind of like getting your, you know, house cleaned, right? In a sense, Uh, everything seems to run more, more, more efficiently, you know, just the atmosphere feels better and is healthier. And so what a great tool. So Ken, you guys have some great products over there at C60 Purple Power. You guys can check them out. You can go to my link, which is shopc60.com forward slash jockers and use the coupon code jockers for 15% off. I know right now I've been using at my home, the MCT oil with cinnamon. And I give that to my kids as well. And they're always like, I want C60. I love the C60. They mm-hmm. like the cinnamon MCT flavor. And you guys have some other really good flavors as well. What, what, what is your favorite? Okay. Well, we have orange and uh, yeah, we have an orange and a peppermint. Yeah. Orange is pretty good. Oh, and by the way, we were doing, all right, in fact, it's happening today. We're doing a run of uh, C60 MCT in cinnamon in eight ounce bottles. You know, oh, nice. Got- so increase in the size. Yes. And we also have, uh, well, we don't have it in flavors yet, but we also have a new packets now that's a uh, little single size packets. You can buy a little box. It has like 30 day supply of the packets. And we have a new product called C60 Sexy. And and that's nice. why, uh, which is a massage <laughs> oil. That will so probably we have, sell we well. Products, which is why, you know, originally we were C60 Purple Power, but we kind of partnered up with some others. And now it's the Shop C60 which offers all of our C60 Purple Power products and like, you know, C60 Sexy. And we're also going to have a few other products soon. Uh, we're going to have facial cream. Mm, that, I was going to uh, ask that, about that. Yeah, C60 works great topically. Yeah. You know? And in fact, that's, the, I think the original human study on C60 is in Japan, they developed a cream with C60 and they found that the use of C60 topically significantly reduced the uh, wrinkles and just sort of age spots in uh, Japanese women. So that was actually one of its original human studies. And, and I've noticed, like, let's say if you get, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm a guy, right? So I don't, 
yeah. do the whole facial thing. Of course. I've, I've noticed that, uh, you know, if you get in, like mosquito bites, yeah. if you get a mosquito bite, starts you start feeling it. If you put C60 on it in about 20 minutes, the hmm. itching goes away, which is, you know, probably stopping the inflammatory response is probably responsible for it. But that's really nice. And so, yeah, especially yep. uh, in other infections and things, C60 topically seems to to work really well. And sometimes like in joints, if they're sore, you can put mm. it on topically and uh, it'll absorb in and uh, and help with, I think MCT oil makes, goes, absorbs a little bit better. We have, we have some people that use EMSO with it and that just yeah. drives right in. So. Well, that's great to know. So you can actually take the oil and, and just put it on different areas like bug bites, maybe rashes, different areas like that, possibly even a cut or a wound and help improve the healing process with that. Yes, exactly. And and by the way, MCT coconut oil is very uh, antibacterial and right. antifungal because anything with yep. a cell wall, MCT coconut oil goes after. Yeah, that that you have cell membrane by acid the way, in it there doesn't bother us. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Well, Ken, this has been really fascinating, and I'm looking forward to hearing more about, particularly the the uh, face cream that you guys are creating. I think that's going to be a breakthrough product. Um, you guys are doing some really great work over there. So. Just uh, again, guys, go to shop th- shop c60.com forward slash jockers. Use the coupon code jockers to get 15% off. Uh, you know, check out all the different products, all the carbon 60 products that he has over there. He's also got a lot of great education on the site as well. You guys also have a great YouTube channel as well. What is what is the name of your YouTube channel? Uh, our YouTube channel is C60 Purple Power. Yeah. So just look and, that up on YouTube. You still have the C60 Purple Power site is still there. It'll just take you to, when you buy, it'll take you to shop C60. But uh, we have a little bit of information there. And there's also a website, we kind of, a group we partner with, they're going to have a website. I think it's up now. What is C60? And yeah. that'll have like all the research because the FDA yeah. says you can't put your research here, but this is an independent sure. group that's going to do their own. And so it'll have the good, the bad, and the ugly. Because there's a lot of, if you go out there and look at some reports, they'll have C60 is quote inflammatory and all this. And if you look at every one of those studies, it's when they use particles of C60, you know, mm-hmm. consisting of thousands or tens of thousands. They're basically crystal fragments. And it's a nanoparticle. Any nanoparticle generally causes inflammation. And, and so it's important to get the right type of C60. For instance, ours is single molecules dissolved in an oil. That's the only type that's had any health benefits. Oh, and we also right. use C60 that's sublimated. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's sublimation is, if you remember from your chemistry class out there, it's it's when a solid turns to a gas, then back to a solid. And so we actually have our, a lot of, uh, we get it unsublimated, so it's never been exposed to solvents. A lot of companies out there use C60 that has basically used solvents, and it primarily methyl benzene, hmm. uh, toluene, which is a pretty nasty industrial solvent, yeah, and then they sure. bake it off. But there's always like a tiny bit left, which is mm-hmm. kind of going to counteract the effects of C60 that you're looking for. But we don't have to worry that worry of that with C60 Purple Power because we use sublimated C60. It's never been exposed to solvents. Well, excellent. Well, you know, I really trust your products and I've been using them for myself and my family as well. We love them. So thanks again for all the great work that you're doing, Ken. Guys, check it out again. Shopc60.com forward slash jockers. And we'll see you guys on a future podcast. Be blessed, everybody.